Welcome to this video, which explains use of the Form Builder spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is designed to avoid the tedious work of repeatedly typing the same information into many different Word document forms. This occurs a lot in the civil litigation context, and that is the situation that will be used as an example in this video. But the spreadsheet is designed to be flexible, and its use is not limited to the legal context, but it could be used in any situation where the same data is frequently written to a variety of different Word document forms. So first I'll explain the overall structure of the form building process, and then I'll demonstrate how it works by preparing a few forms. If the spreadsheet is being used by a lawyer, he or she would begin with a list of personal information, and then for each file or matter handled by the lawyer, there'd be information about the case. And that information would be written into correspondence, and in the case of a lawyer involved in civil litigation, that information would also be written into many different court forms. Much of that same information would also be written into office accounting forms related to the client matter. So the premise of the form building spreadsheet is that each client matter has its own tab of the spreadsheet, and on that tab there is a list of variables. That list of variables is mostly up to the user to define and depends on the user's personal situation. Then each variable must be assigned a field code, which is wrapped in curly brackets. The user can decide what the field codes will be, but they must be wrapped in curly brackets. Then finally, the variable values must be specified, and that data is also entered onto a sheet in the form builder spreadsheet for that client. Then the user can prepare a library of Word document forms that the data will be written into. And those Word document forms can contain field codes, again wrapped in curly brackets, wherever data is to be written into the Word document from the form builder spreadsheet. Then when it comes time to create a form, the user opens up the form builder spreadsheet selects the form to be used, and then at the click of the button can transfer data from the spreadsheet into the field codes in the applicable Word document. So for example, where the spreadsheet contains a field code lawyer name, and the Word document contains that same field code, then the variable value from the spreadsheet will be written in place of that field code in the Word document. And that'll apply to all of the field codes in the Word document that have values specified in the Excel spreadsheet, so long as the field codes in the spreadsheet match the field codes in the Word document. So that's the theory of it, and now let's see how it works in practice. So here is a sample library of forms, and this is a set of forms suitable for a lawyer handling civil litigation matters. Of course, your forms might be different. And you'll notice that the precedent forms have field codes in them. So for example, the form for a letter to one recipient has field codes for the author name, for the address information, a variety of field codes that will be written into. And then, for example, if we go into the court forms folder and we look at the notice of civil claim, again, we see that it's got a collection of field codes, uh, both at the top and the style of cause. And then also down at the bottom, the address information has got the author name, author phone number, uh, again, the author name, and then in the footer at the bottom as well, it's got some more field codes. When first using the Form Builder spreadsheet, it's necessary to tell the spreadsheet where the library of forms is located. And although this is only a step performed very seldom, for example, when first using the spreadsheet, I'll demonstrate how that works. So what you do is you take the path to the library of forms, you copy it to the clipboard, then you go to the Form Builder spreadsheet, and on the Inputs tab, there's up to 10 spaces where you can copy paths to libraries of forms. So I'll go ahead and paste it into the top cell over there. I'll then go to the Smith & Jones matter sheet over here, which is a hypothetical civil litigation matter, and I'll walk through some of the variable fields that we need to enter in the matter sheet. So first we have the date variable field over here. You'll notice that in this cell there's a formula that cal calculates the current date, and this is the date that will be used in the document. So let's just leave that as it is for now. So you'll notice that the spreadsheet has blue zones and green zones. The blue zones contain field codes that are also contained in the Word document, and the green zones contain the variable values that will be written into the Word document in place of the field codes. Then there are just two red field codes, and those are special field codes that are fixed. So for example, the date document field code is the one that is used to write in the current date into the Word document, wherever that field code occurs in the Word document. And in the case of the root folder path field code, down here in the list section of variables, that is used to specify the path of 
the folder in Windows Explorer for this client matter. And that is actually going to be the default save location for forms that are created. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But looking at this list section over here, we basically see that there's a long listing of variables that the user can specify. And in all cases, the field codes are specified in the blue zone and the corresponding variable value is specified in the green zone. It is not necessary for the Word document to have all of the field codes that are listed in the spreadsheet, but the macro will do a search for all of the field codes that are listed, and if it doesn't find one in the Word document, it'll just move on to the next one. Also, if the macro finds multiple instances of a particular field code in the Word document, that's fine. It'll just write the variable value in for all of those fields. If there is a field code in the Word document, but no corresponding variable value in the spreadsheet, then that field code will be removed from the Word document and not replaced with anything. So for example, if this value was empty, then when the macro ran, anywhere that author name appears in the Word document would be deleted and it would be blank in that location because there's nothing to write over it. And you can make the list of field codes in this list section as long as you want, so long as they all occur above this end of list cell. So you can go ahead and insert more rows in the blue zone if you need them. So moving up then to the table of variables section, this area can be used when there are many data points associated with a particular person or object. Again, the table could be used for any type of data, but in the civil litigation example, it is used for address information. And note how each field code shown in the column headings ends with an X. That is mandatory and all table columns should end with an X and then a closed curly bracket. Then what happens is that the numeric value that is entered in the blue column on the left is combined with the column headings by substituting the number in place of the X to form a complete field code. So for example, where the value Mark Smith would be written in where the Word document form contains the field code individual name one. And likewise, if we put a two in the row for Greg Jones, then when the macro runs, the name Greg Jones will be written in to the field code individual name two, because there's a two in the row for Greg Jones. So again, you can insert rows and you can fill the table with addresses, as many as you need. And then when you need to use one or more of those addresses, you can selectively enter numbers into the blue cells over here. And then when the macro runs, it'll only write in data into the Word documents for rows that have numbers entered in the blue zone. So let's go ahead and prepare a form. And let's assume we want to sing, send a letter to Mark Smith and uh, that'll be the only recipient, so we just put a number one in the blue zone over here. We come up, we select the correspondence folder, because that's the folder where our form is located. We select letter number one, or letter one recipient, should I say. We click the grey button over here to preview the form. And the form looks good. Uh, we can see that it's got a collection of field codes in here, and you can shut down the form, or you can leave it open. And then when we click prepare form, it's going to write in this information for these field codes and it's going to write in some of some of this information wherever these field codes appear in the Word document. So let's go ahead and prepare the form. It can take a second to run because it's got to look through all the variables and see which ones are used. Then it's going to prompt for the form to be saved and I'll go ahead and just type letter and I'll hit save and now we can see that the precedent, which had a bunch of field codes, now has the variable values written in. So I'll go ahead and prepare another form. Perhaps this time we can do a civil litigation form. So I'll scroll down and perhaps pick the Notice of Civil Claim. Notice here that the root folder path is C drive client files 1234001. Notice as well that we have some court file information entered over here. So when we go ahead and prepare the form, it's going to prompt to save the form at the location of that file path, which is C drive client files 1234001. And that's the, basically the importance of the root folder path field code, is it defines the default save location. And we'll now see that it is written in the information for the style of cause. The details near the bottom of the document are all filled in, as is the information in the footer of the document. So I'll shut that file down. And perhaps just show you as well that if the list is quite long, you can type in letters into this gray cell over here to reduce the length of the form. So for example, if I wanted to look for affidavits, I could just type in a couple of letters. 
hit enter and it'll prepare a pared down list which I can use and if I want to revert back to the full list I just hit the clear button. So that is essentially how the form builder spreadsheet works and the power of it comes from having a well curated library of word document forms that are tailored to your specific needs and they can then be easily accessed and data can be written to them. Of course, they'll still need to be careful review and editing to create finalized documents, but the form builder spreadsheet removes a lot of the tedious work and helps with error mitigation by not repeatedly typing the same information and perhaps uh, creating typos as you go. There is a written guide that explains various other workings of the spreadsheet and that written guide is available through the description below. But briefly stated, there's the Mattersheet template over here and that is the foundation from which Mattersheets are built when a new Mattersheet is created. There's also the Sheet Navigation and Table Data Sheet which acts as a home page within the Form Builder spreadsheet and allows the creation of new sheets using this green button over here. And it also has other functionality which is described in the written outline. The sheet navigation and table data sheet also contains a large table where address information can be stored and indeed it is the headings of this table that are used when a new sheet is created using the matter sheet template. In other words these headings on this sheet navigation and table data sheet are the master set of headings and those will become the headings on individual matter sheets when new sheets are created using the green button that I mentioned earlier. And again, that's explained in the written guide. And then as well, there's a add-ins menu up at the top here, which has got a collection of buttons, which provide various functionality, including helping move data around, checking forms for errors and things like that. I use the form builder spreadsheet on a daily basis at work, and I find it to be a real time saver. For sure, it requires effort to set up the library of forms, but once that is done, then there's long-term efficiencies and it's really worthwhile. If you try it, hopefully you'll also find it useful. Thanks. Bye.